Hello again, everyone. This is Ken Kibler, Director of Client Profitability for eTruck Biz. We've just reached the top of the hour and the attendee list is uh, still growing. So we're going to sit tight for about a minute or so uh, until the attendee list uh, settles off. So uh, please sit tight and we'll get going here shortly. Thank you very much. All right, the attendee list seems to have leveled off. Uh, we will get going here. Once again, this is Ken Kibler, uh, Director of Client Profitability with eTruck Biz. I want to thank everybody for joining us today, uh, where I think we've got a very important uh, presentation today to talk about uh, one simple number that can really help the profitability of your operation. Uh, as well as talk about some of the normal things with the volume and the productivity trends. So without further ado, I will turn this over to Jeff Walczak. And as always, if you have any questions, please put them in the Q&A or the chat. Thank you very much. Okay, as we always start off with, and I have to let you know that eTruck Biz is not door sponsored, approved or otherwise, affiliated with FedEx Corporation, Here we go with volume trends. We had the holiday before, right? Memorial Day. And then, uh, oh, look at that. Pretty big recovery there. That's a good thing. <clears throat> the stops were up. Actually, if you look at the stops, I didn't put it on here, but if the, the stops are actually a little better than they were before the um, holiday. Now, the package is not so much, but there was a... There was a bounce back. That's good. How about over on the delivery side? Uh-oh. Look at that. Delivery stops. Guys got smoked last week. That's good. That's really good. And those packages over there, boy. So that's interesting. Right? That was uh, some big shippers. I let a few things go during the holiday weekend or whatever happened there that's interesting maybe some hubs got caught up who knows ken but that was a big bounce back i'm saying people needed a lot of dog food but their pets were hungry that's right so let's see how we handled it let's look at the productivity or can we demonstrate proficiency to our friends at FedEx Corporation. Again, we've talked about the new contract, but we'll talk about that later, but that looks pretty good. Sort of, kind of, routes dispatch were up. Of course they're up, but I don't know if that's that good. Uh, no. Stops for dispatch only went up 1%. So is that an opportunity lost? I think we peaked at 118 during peak, correct? Jeff was yeah. the highest peak. So if we had opportunity, can we get back to 118? That's what you have to ask yourself. Right. Can we do something about it? Right. So we want to ask you this question. Do you know how many stops per dispatch you have out today? Do you know that? We're going to ask another question. How many should it be? And yet another question. What's your easy number? All right. Let's go to the news. 
And as everybody knows, now uh, it's no longer FedEx Ground, it's FedEx Corporation. That's good. <clears throat> but sometimes it's to appreciate where you're at. It's it's a good thing. What you want to do is you want to look at back at how we actually got here. What was the journey to get to FedEx Corporation? So let's have a look at the evolution of what is now referred to as the contractor contracted service provider model. So if you go back to the RPS days, Ken, can you go back to the RPS days? I can. I was a little bit younger then. Yeah, me and too. And thinner. So that was back in the one contractor, one PSA. Isn't that what they were? They were PSAs back then. Yep. You had one truck, and what you did is you ran Monday through Friday, and it was primarily business to business packages and stops, right? And the contract, I don't even know what they called it back then, but we'll just call it old. It was an old contract. Then at some point, FedEx Ground became a thing. One contractor, one PSA. Uh, and at some point, you were able to have up to five trucks, which was pretty cool. Service days were still Monday through Friday. And for the most part, it was still business to business. I wonder if uh, I wonder if there's anybody out there like Dave Parrish who remembers these days. Raise your hand if you remember. I don't know if we can see that, but um, anyways, back up to five up to five trucks. That was cool, right? So then you were able to have one contractor, multiple CSAs. You had multiple vehicles. And then at one point, it became a six, seven-day operation, seven days, one dispatch. I'm saying that for a reason. And the service was, then there was something called home delivery, which introduced, I mean, there was, oh, there was residentials back in the day too, but then there was a bunch of residentials, home delivery, business to business, business to business service. And there was something called at some point, not too long ago, Ken, the ISP contract, right? Yep. And after that, now there's FedEx Corporation, one contractor. Most of you will wind up with multiple CSAs and multiple terminals. Some of you already have this, but more of you than you think are going to have multiple CSAs, multiple terminals, multiple vehicles. Right now it's a six to seven day operation. Some run six, some run seven. And definitely the services change, right? So residentials, business to business. Now express packages are making their way into the system. Express meaning time definites in the contract. Not going to say anything about that. So I can hear everybody out there right now. Well, what's the point? Who cares? So what? Great. Well, as the model has evolved, the complexity to, to get it all done or what was what's going on. Back in the day, one guy came in, you did your route, went home, whatever. Yeah, you had other stuff going on, but it was it was pretty easy. Then when it got to be Fred, FedEx Brown and he had a few other trucks and whatnot, then it got a little tougher. Would you say that's true, Ken? He had to start managing employees. That get, makes it a little tougher. Well, then when, when uh, there was multiple CSAs, multiple vehicles, everything got put together in the ISP contract, it got very difficult. We, you know that. I mean, you can look back. Most of you that are on this call right now have probably seen this part of it. It's been a fairly difficult operation. But now, with FedEx Corporation and putting everything together, it's about to become very complex. 
as complex as it can be. Actually, you could put a little more in there, but it's going to become very, very difficult, right? So over time, the model has become more difficult and complicated to manage. <clears throat> as, it, as it continues, it's getting more difficult to find competent help for your business. So, and I'm not just talking about drivers. Drivers is always going to be a, an issue, but there are... It, it as you as it get becomes things become more complex to get somebody that can help you that knows what they're doing is is difficult now there's a any host there's hundreds of people out there with they consult and they do this and they do that but do they really know what they're doing because what we're finding out is people come back to us saying uh well this guy said he could do this or that but can you fix the mess that got made okay well we will but it's getting tough out there, but despite all the searching that goes on out there, there is something that makes things easier to do that might be might have been hiding in plain sight. It, it's very difficult to see and impossible almost to calculate and track. Wouldn't it be great, Ken? Wouldn't it be great? It'd be really great. If there was one easy number that could be computed and tracked for you that was easily understandable for owners, BCs, and drivers. Is there a number like that already that we everybody knows to, to try to achieve something? I don't think there is. Mm, there might be one. Everybody knows service. We yep. gotta do we gotta get service. And everybody knows 99 five or 99, 95, whatever. The the goal is, oh no, we know that one, but that's easy enough to understand. I gotta get all the packages off my truck. Right. But <clears throat> there might be another easy number. And wouldn't it be cool if this number helped you ensure gold status? Wouldn't it be cool if this number aided in the maximizing of your negotiations? Talk about that here in a little bit. Wouldn't it also be cool if this number ultimately creates a stable contract worthy of dependable renewals? Those of you that have ever been in the OTC doghouse or have any had any run-ins with FedEx would appreciate this more than most, but wouldn't it be cool if there was one easy number that gave owners the opportunity to maximize driver wages? Whoa. Maximize driver wages. How would I do that? Wouldn't it be cool if there was one number that shows FedEx that you're ready to be granted additional CSAs. Hey, they're out there looking for this right now. They're looking for folks that, that instead of going to the outside, they're they're out there looking for, and they always have been doing this, but they're doing this more than usual now. They're looking for current competent contractors who want CSAs. Proficient contractors? Efficient con yes, sir. Efficient contractors. Yes, sir. Wouldn't it be cool if there was a number out there that when used in conjunction with other e-truck biz services minimizes total owner involvement? Saving a whole lot of time. Wouldn't it be cool? If there was one easy number that maximizes your profitability and return on investment. Wouldn't it also be cool if there was one easy number that ultimately makes it ridiculously easy to run your business? Do you think there's a number like that, Ken, out there? A number. 
So we're going to ask the group here, if you would, if I could figure out how to do it. Oh, there's the poll. If you wouldn't mind answering the poll, what do you think this number we're talking about is? Is it turnover percent? Uh-oh, S-P-O-R-H. <clears throat> What's that? Measurement number. What? Oh, I'm sorry. What's that? Stops per on road hour. Stops per on road hour. That would be great if drivers were on the road long enough. So we'll wait just a little bit longer here. And good job, whoever's doing this. It just popped up this time, I think. <laughs> I didn't have to send it over somewhere this time. We've got about 40% in, so I think that's probably pretty good. You want me to end it? Yeah, I guess so. That's pretty oh. Stops per on road hour. Stops per on road hour. And looks like it won. Right? Yep. Let's see if I can stop here. Uh-oh. Sorry, but none of those are it. Can you see the screen, Ken? Did I get it back? Yeah. Sorry, but none of those are it. I can see it. There you go. So that was a funny joke, Ken. It's not so stops for on road hour. What? So I'm laughing. That's there's there you go. The concept of this number. Is not necessarily new, but the ability to find it, track it, compute it is. So what do you think it is? I know. Look at that, Ken. I like it's that. You guys did some graphic today. Okay, let's do it again. See if we can do it again. I can. Oh, I don't know how I screwed up. Hit the play button right in the center. There you go. There it is, the easy number. The easy number. Well, what the hell's the easy number? Oh, now it's gonna play all the time. Stand by. Oop. So <clears throat> Thanks to eTruck Biz Financial Services, we can now, of course, as always, as we have for years and years and years, way before everybody else on the internet here now, all of a sudden it's going to help everybody else out with their negotiation. This negotiation lady was doing these way before everybody else. But anyway, we're going to continue to help you with your negotiation. Now, if we help you with your negotiation, or we can even do it from what you've got already out there, we can create an operating budget and detailed cost to operate based off your negotiation. Now, that's important because for several things, but one is we, we, not, we know what FedEx expects you to spend on certain things. Right now, we've known this for a, a while, but not in the fashion we're about to show you here. So it, you get your negotiation, you create a budget, detailed cost to operate, a plan. So from those two things, a set of operating goals can be derived that contains the easy number. The exact, not a range, not a guess, the exact average stops per dispatch needed to achieve your budget, right? So here's a little screenshot example of what we're talking about here. So we do all those things. You get your negotiation, a budget, you get a budget, cost per dispatch, cost per stop, cost per mile, all those things are in your budget. But once you have a budget, then you need to make sure that there's an average stops per dispatch, the easy number, something that 
can be calculated now exactly that you can know as the owner, your BC can know, and guess who else can know? Hey, drivers, I got to put a certain amount of stops on your truck every day. Well, I don't want that many stops. Well, we're going to have to change our tune here to make our budget to make to make sure we can pay our bills. Right. So no matter what happens, if you you and your team can achieve this number, all other business goals will fall in place. <clears throat> so some of the other things we used to preach. That's true. Stops run road hour are good. There's all kinds of metrics that you're going to wind up using, but it's all about this number. It's all about this easy to understand, easy number. No big deal. Well, actually it is because when you achieve that number, all those things we said before we talked about what this number is, you can achieve all those things if all that you do is make sure you got enough stops on each truck or you average enough stops on each truck every day. Real easy. You can guess at the number, but you can't know it unless you go, through, that's what we just said, unless you go through the negotiation budget and goal development exercise. And now, even cooler than being able to calculate this, is the ability to track it on the new boss dashboard. So we showed this to a few folks uh, this morning and guess what I heard, Ken? Twice now. They like it, but this is the first time they've seen it. Yeah, but I think the best thing is, and we'll, and I'd love to do it for every single one of you on here. I'd love to put this in front of you and the best word you can hear when you put something up there like this, is the word wow because folks i showed it to this morning and said wow that's cool so why wow well first you can look at your average stops for plan dispatch easy number guess what there's going to be some different branding on that but you can see that that's coming but right underneath that you can't see it or you can't see it but um you'll be able to see your drivers who is logged in to the scanner, but hasn't clocked in yet on their timekeeping device. And then there's a way to fix it right next to it. So that it's probably worthy of an entire different uh, presentation, which we'll do. And of course, down the bottom right-hand corner, you can, you can watch and see what's happening with your average stops for dis dispatch over time, which is very cool. There's some other cool stuff on there, um, but not only is there the new dashboard, but when you click on the button up top that talks about real-time progress, you can see your dis your uh, stops per dispatch or delivery stops, in this case, pickup stops and, and time definite stops, all in real time in the morning as the trucks are getting loaded up. Why is that important? Because, oh, go ahead, Ken. So you know if you've got a successful plan or do I need to add a route or cut a route out? So we have a, a goal. We just went through the whole thing about goal, knowing your easy number. So in this case, you can watch to see if you're achieving that easy number before the trucks leave the building. Because if you're not, that's when you got to fix it, right? Now, I know that sounds easy, but there you go. All of these things and however complex this whole business is about to become for all of us, that's a true. But if we just watch the one number and watch it happen in the morning and then watch it transpire during the day, Really got something going on here, right? The easy number is the, for those of you that know what this is, that ever read this book, the easy number is the one minute manager for P&D operations. Okay. So if you're interested in us helping you compute your easy number, you want to email Becca, 
get on our calendar. I don't know if there's something or will be something in the chat here, a way to sign up on our calendar. But there you go. Can't make it any more easier than that. So, see if there's any questions or anything. Couple there. questions here. It says yes. They added uh, kinks, which included six p.m. pickups. That's something that changed. I think uh, Dave was talking about. Yep, the six p.m. pickups uh, actually did start uh, in the early uh, days of. The independent contractor, uh, no doubt about it, with the uh, with Kinko slash FedEx office stores, uh, that did happen. So, uh, Dave also asked, "Can this be done for line hauls?" I'd like to explain this idea to my wife. She knows the difference between revenue and the cost to operate a truck. Uh, Dave, uh, give me a call uh, after this. I think I I can work through uh, some of that. I think. Just like there, there's a magic number here uh, for your P&D operator. I think there's a mat on those are stops. In line hall, there's a magic number based off of miles uh, in, in your operation. So I, it, it's going to have to do with miles. We can work through something. Uh, but it, it, part, of it's, part of it's knowing your expenses, but you, you got to figure out how, what's your optimal number of miles that's going to generate the revenue that you need to operate that truck. When I was a director for a truckload company, uh, we had a goal of generating $5,000 worth of revenue on each tractor each week. And that was during a five day week. Can you do more than that? This was 13 years ago. So, so that number has definitely changed, but it, it will have to do with miles. Are there any other questions? You know, I can't stress enough uh, as a director of client profitability how important it is to know this number. Uh, but you got to have a way of getting it. Uh, it's not one you can just think. Uh, you, you know, what's going to produce the revenue that you need to net the profit uh, that fits your budget? And it's different in every operation. It, it's different based off of miles. It's different based off of truck payments. It's different based on density. Uh, also on mix, you, you know, what's my percentage of e-commerce versus non-e-commerce? So this number will change and that's why it's critical uh, to start with a negotiation and then an evaluation. Can't believe we don't have any questions on this. Uh, like I said, I, I, it, it's really a simple way to think about your business. Uh, we had John Speed on probably three or four weeks ago where he knew that number was 100 for his operation. Uh, and, he, you know, and he said, hey, yesterday we we're at 114. Good. Because I need that because today was kind of a bad day. You know, we were at 96, I think. Uh, Mondays can be very difficult. So if if your number's 100 and you hit 96 on Monday, what do you have to average the rest of the week? Well, you got to get somehow, you got to go 102, 102, 102 to bring yourself back up to that 100 number as an average. And of course, you know, Saturdays, your stops per dispatch or your easy number might be a little bit different, but... What am I? What do I have to average for the week? And if you go back, if you look at Jeff's report, it basically gives you an estimated average number of dispatches per day, and that's going to be based off of whether you're a six or a seven day operation. Still no questions. Uh, once again, to book a meeting with. Uh, Becca, uh, if you look in the chat, there is a link right there, or you can reach her at Becca at eTruckBiz.com. Uh, please don't miss this opportunity. It's it's one of those numbers that you need now, and it's also a number that's going to change with your next contract, and a number that's going to change once you start to get uh, 
the time definite shipments because it will change. Your revenue will change. Your productivity will change. All of those things will change. So uh, it, it's that once you get this easy number, it's not there for a lifetime. Okay. It, you, you know, I would suggest, you, you know, that you look at it quarterly, biannually at worst, and, and then definitely at the time that you get a new contract. Jeff, Bob, anything to add? No, nope. sir. Okay. Well, like I said, we, we're going to keep this simple. The easy number is the number you need. Uh, I, I, I'd love it if everybody on there had an easy number or know it already, uh, but not sure that's the case. Uh, so we will be back here next Tuesday with some more information as we continue to move uh, rapidly towards network uh, uh, 2.0 expanding and one FedEx since it's now FedEx Corporation. So if we don't talk to anybody, everybody before then, Please have a safe and profitable week. Thank you very much.